Um, so before we get started, I am just going to do a little, um, some announcements about how Zoom works and how we're going to use Zoom on this performance today. So the first thing is that, uh, I would like you all to please mute yourselves. So if you hover your cursor over your little, um, image of yourself, in the upper right hand corner, there is a little blue button that you can click to mute or unmute yourself. So for the show um, until the end, but it, I would like you to have yourself muted at the end after the show finishes. Then we'll stay and hang out. Um, and Wait, so am, I, am I muted or not muted? Uh, someone is not muted who just asked. It's me, it's me. So yeah, it should have like a little red microphone with a, a line through it if you're muted. Um, and at, after the show, you can unmute yourselves and we would all love to say hi to all of you and for you to say hi to each other if you'd like to. So that's the first thing, stay muted please. The second thing is there's two sort of options for how you're gonna the the view mode that you have yourself in so in the upper right hand corner of your zoom the whole zoom window you can either click on speaker view um, and if you are on speaker view then you will only see the person whose microphone is being picked up by zoom so whatever sound is loudest to zoom is the the image that you'll see in front of you. If you click that again, which is this little, now it's a little grid, you can click it back to gallery view. So those are two different views that you can switch between um, as you see fit. So um, I think probably for a lot of it, it will be more interesting to watch in speaker view, but it's also nice to, to sometimes maybe see what other people are are doing, somebody has a dog that is muted. Still not muted. No home shop, you're not muted. I just went and muted you. Okay. No, I'll mute you again. Okay, the other thing is if you want to be able to scroll through and see who it all is in here, on the right hand corner in the middle of your screen, there's like a little arrow that if you hover over it becomes blue and you can click on that and that will take you through all of the, um, I think there's three screens worth of people right now. Um, so that's something that you can do if you would like to. Also, if you didn't get the, um, if you don't understand already, I think it was in the email, but this is being recorded. So if you don't want to have your image in this recording, you can also black your video out on the bottom of the Zoom screen. There's stop video on the bottom left hand side. You just press that, it will black you out. Uh, let's see, I have to check my notes if there's something else. Oh. There's a chat feature. If you really have the need to um, communicate with somebody else that you see on the screen during the show, you can do the, do the chat feature, which is on the bottom in the middle of your Zoom screen on the bottom, it says chat, you just click on that, and then you can choose either to um, chat with everyone, or to just click on one person. And let's see. Anything else? Grid to speaker, chat feature. 
um, unmute, mute, announcements. Okay, I think that's everything. So I am going to get my screen set up. Okay. We are going to start. intro homemaking dance I actually had an idea that I didn't um, think of before but if any of you would like to be a more if any of you would like to be a more um, have a more experiential um, experience of the performance you could also find some thing to do in your home that would make you feel more at home while you're watching. So maybe it's like cleaning something or um, I see. Yeah, but Kyla, don't, don't you think it might be a little distracting if everyone is multitasking and doing different tasks when we're making the show about love and connection and being present with everyone? I don't think it's a distraction actually it makes me feel more present and grounded um you know during these zoom visits um i just like doing something physical something that keeps me engaged and you know i have screen fatigue and it just helps me to stay connected to my body you know it makes me feel more present yeah have you looked into any blue light glasses lulu no, no, that's a good idea, but that's a different issue. 
I just think it's super important that we find a way to stay in our bodies, that we keep them activated and engaged as everything becomes more and more virtual. Otherwise, we just dissociate and totally sense, totally lose like a sense of home that is our own body. I mean, you're also doing that with your therapy snake, no? Like that's a tactile, physical connection. Yeah. I definitely understand, or I, and I, I resonate with needing to be physically engaged, um, but I also am trying to be careful with how much I'm multitasking and trying to switch to, to focusing on one thing so that I can be more present and available, I suppose. Michelle, you there? Do we lose her? Yes, I'm here, but can you hear me? Yes. Maybe, shall we start with introductions then? Yeah, good idea, Kshal. I think, uh, I think we should start with introductions. Um, so, could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. I'm Hope. I'm 29 years old. My birthday is August 1st, and I'm living in Pecos, my hometown in West Texas. And I wanted to share a home object with you all. This donkey planter that has been in the family since before I existed. She's old. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Lulu. Um, I am 31 years old and my birthday is April 7th. Uh, I am from Munich, Germany, and I am right now in Berlin. And I brought following home object. This blanket or rather this cover um i got i believe like more than 20 years ago for christmas and my sister also has one in red and my brother got one in blue and uh yeah so this makes me feel at home hey i'm jake um i'm 27 i am from buffalo new york I am Lulu. Hey, Lulu, are you vacuuming? Hey, Lulu, are are you vacuuming right now? What? Are you are you vacuuming right now? Yeah. Can you stop for a second? It's kind of it's just like really distracting. I can't focus. Sorry. <laughs> um. So. I'm Jake, I'm 27, from Buffalo. Um, I live right down the street from our friend Kyla here. Um, the, I'm also, I was born on November 15th, 1992. And I brought with me today my snake. She's a python, her name is Ramona, and she just really comforts me, the way that she holds me and squeezes me. Makes me feel like I'm at home. Lydia, I'm 24 and I was born in 1995, November 26. I was born in Buffalo, New York, and I'm living in Los Angeles. Um, and I'm a sister of Kyla. And my home object is a twin that has been always been around my family home. I think when I was little, it had popcorn kernels and then later nutritional yeast. Now I keep tea in it, but it makes me think of home. I'm Kyla and I am 35. 
and I, my birthday is May 6th. And I live in Buffalo, I'm from Buffalo. And my home object is this um, sculpture here, which is something that um, I think I was five when I, my mom had me drew this, draw this picture and then she turned it into this sculpture. And I think there's even still the, I think it was in a group show at the Albright maybe? long time ago, 1990. Um, and it hung in the house that I, all the houses that I grew up in. And when I moved back to Buffalo a few years ago, I got it and I have been hanging it in my home. And that makes me feel at home. Hi, I'm Michelle. Uh, I'm 36 years old. I am living at Berlin at the moment in Berlin. And uh, my birthday is on the 7th of November. I'm Scorpio. Um, and uh, I'm from Mexico. And the object that makes me feel home is this one, it's a plant, it's a very beautiful one. And yes, but actually, oh, I am thinking to develop a piece that is about being at home in my own body because I think this is what is really home for me somehow. Um, so I actually have some footage of our conversation about that piece and that you were, you were showing me a little bit of it. Do you think that maybe our Zoom audience would like to see that footage? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just like very drafty. I mean, it's not developed, but maybe it can be interesting. I don't know. If you think yeah. it can be interesting, we can show so. it. I think it's interesting to see it in process. I also think it's interesting or maybe uh, good to, for us to tell the audience that Ixchel has a terrible internet connection. <laughs> right. <laughs> but she comes, she cuts out sometimes, but she always comes back. So you don't need to worry about it. I was interested to create like a movement a vocabulary uh, that it will come just from the simplicity of uh, touching oneself. And by that, like we, because I want that is a quartet, we all have kind of the same language and that is coming just from this simple action somehow. And um, it's called the intim the infinite gesture also because of that because then the hands are always touching so they are kind of um, all the time creating gestures and also like questioning if you put it in stage what does it mean to be intimate with oneself but also uh, under the gaze of somebody else because also I have like first of all intimacy is more accepted to give intim intimacy to others if somebody else is, is observing is more accepted than to be intimate to yours to oneself because being intimate to oneself there's always like a kind of taboo or something and then i was wondering okay but then how can we be intimate to other people and to come closer to them if we always kind of not even allowed to be close to, to us. So somehow for me, this piece is also like a way of kind of uh, recognizing yourself, like trying to reconnect uh, to yourself in a different level, taking time, but also knowing your own boundaries. Yeah, like also like psychological 
boundaries. We don't even recognize what is us, you know, like we are just passing. Yeah, like there's like a point, I mean, of course, when you become older, you know, that you're kind of like, you start to see things in a different way, you know, like, for example, masturbation is one of them, you know, but then it's funny that there's certain kind of, I don't know where it's coming from, that it seems like, is it wrong to do it? What it, does that mean? Is it because I'm lonely? You know, also these other thoughts. Is it because I feel miserable and I don't have someone? You know, like these are thoughts that are so wrong. Yeah, beliefs that are wrong. You know, that are misguided, that are kind of imposed and that I just learned somehow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because this is our home and we have to treat good our home and we don't do it we don't learn to do it i really relate to that i've been trying to commit to new routines to help me feel more at home in myself and part of that has been finding ways to challenge myself i for example have been teaching myself to play piano I've been playing piano a lot too these days. What are you working on, Lydia? Some very beautiful songs that you are probably familiar with. Do you want to row, row, row your boat? Or, <laughs> or cockles and mussels? It's kind of amazing how you can learn something like that and it's as simple as trying. I think I um, don't really, I'm not familiar with failing and continuing to try, but this is something that there's no way to, there's no way around the learning process. Yeah. So I have to go through all the steps and in the process, I'm seeing like how simple it is that if I repeat this enough times and go through the tension of repeating, making mistakes, repeating, making mistakes, there's a change that happens. And I think I still don't really believe that the change will happen because I don't usually push myself to do stuff I'm not already good at. And it's exciting and giving me like new self-esteem to see that I can learn a new system. It just, it feels kind of magic how you suddenly understand it <laughs> I see time slipping away without decisiveness or something to show, learning, loving, working, making, or good rest. And then for routines, every night before I sleep, I brush my hair <laughs> with olive oil and rosemary oil. Lately, I rarely ever wash the oil out. In the morning before everything, I move, circle my hips, roll my neck, hang upside down. For breakfast, I fry an egg, break the yolk, melt cheese on top, pepper, salt, 
I toast half of an everything bagel for, from the bakery, butter, and an avocado or small salad. I brew coffee or mate or chicory, barley, dandelion root, and milk. And I have a small breakfast dessert with my drink, half an almond croissant. Lately, I play cockles and mussels or chopsticks on my piano next. Lately, some days are all one thing, the park with Mariah, eating and following shade spots with the blanket or a disappeared day on TV or a disappeared day of listing priorities. Yeah, my routines are really important right now for me to feel a sense of connection to home with myself because I'm here living with my parents in my childhood bedroom. Uh, I've lived with my parents too uh, in Munich, also in my childhood bedroom. But I've been back in Berlin for a couple of days now and uh, it feels really good. Um, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Every time when I leave, my room is the cleanest. And then when I come back, it feels like I am on holidays in my own room. Like it's kind of like an Airbnb. But then I open up my suitcase and boom, I have a total mess. I feel that. Where do you, where do you live now? Uh, I live in a place called Kunsthaus Kuhle, which is a co-op, like an artist community that has existed for 30 years in uh, Berlin Mitte. And it was squatted uh, by art students 30 years ago, right when the wall um, had fallen. And um, we have a front house and a back house and it's five stories and downstairs we have a theater space and a gallery space and we only have one kitchen and this is shared by 20 people and um yeah oh is it still um is it still squatted no no it was squatted by you know in the 90s by the original group of students um who were studying art and costume design at the University of uh, the Arts here in Berlin. And then they were looking for owners and then they found a lawyer and a tax accountant. And so we've been paying rent ever since then. How is it uh, for you, Hope, to be living back with your parents? It's hot. Well, just thinking about home in terms of the work that I do, which is, you know, in my home, in my hometown, um, about my family, friends, strangers, community here. Um, and it's been interesting to come back here, live with my parents um, during this crazy time. I think a friend had asked me, a while back about um, how does it feel to be stuck at home in West Texas during this time and I don't feel I don't necessarily feel stuck here because being here is what grounds me as an artist um, but it's interesting to feel like I'm missing a sort of private home that I was used to away from here.
It sounds like loud air conditioners because everyone has their ACs on full blast and they're mostly all like window units. Um, for those of us who can't afford central air conditioning. Um, I was, it's funny because I had this conversation with my mom not too long ago because she, I rarely see her cry. I think one of the only times I've seen my mom cries when our cat died and she sobbed. Um, and I had a conversation with her about that, how I've never really seen her cry. And she told me that she sometimes wakes up feeling like she wants to cry badly and really, really wants to, but just can't. And she feels a big lump in her throat, but she can't produce any tears. I've been crying so much lately. It's been pretty cathartic, but most times I guess I just feel numb. I've been trying on a lot of masks. Being under weighted blanket sounds like an experience of psychic oppression. But what it actually is, is a way for adults to swaddle themselves. Firm, even pressure around the body activates the same kind of chemical experience that babies get when they are wrapped tightly. feelings aren't just in the brain, they are throughout the body. They are both emotional and physical. Peace, safety, relaxation are felt and understood in the tissues everywhere, to the bone. Weighted blankets enforce stillness. In this stillness we can sleep, or we can be awake. Thinking nothing, we can listen for something. We can wrap ourselves tightly in a blanket or get under something heavy and wait. The chemicals will activate and circulate. This will help us hold still and wait. My neighbor talks to herself in a language I don't understand when she is outside tending to her plans. She does this for what seems like hours each day. My window overlooks her yard and every day I hear her making sounds, some kind of melodic talking or chaotic singing. I've heard that plans appreciate kind words and classical music. Of course, I know this is true.
Masks are heavy. Okay. But can we do the goodbye dance, maybe? Yeah, I think it's I think it's time. It's a mad, mad world Open up your arms It's a mad, mad world Open up your arms, oh yeah If you believe me, I know Thanks all for being here with us in your homes, in our homes. If you want to unmute yourselves and say hi. Okay. Let's see if anyone ready. Hey. Hi. 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 Great work. Hey, Hannah. Hi, nice to see you, Hope. That was lovely. Wow, so many people. Hey everybody. Oh my there's Jesse. I'm not gonna call anyone out, but everyone is welcome to call themselves out. <laughs> Kyla. Hi, this is Annie and mm -hmm. I brought uh wow. <laughs> Mr. Rogers owl because of the theme of this one. Is 
Is, is that, um, did Mr. Rogers give you that owl? Um, yes. Oh. And I have another friend. Oh, it's no. Friday. <laughs> we all thought this was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got Mr. Rogers. Did he really give you those personally? No. Yes. Well, for Jonah. But yes. That's pretty cool. Everybody looks really cozy. <laughs> um, and the person in the car too looks cozy. <laughs> yeah, Josh. Julia, you came with your face. Brandon, do you remember Brandon from the cabin? Is he here? He's here. Oh! And he Happy birthday. <laughs> And he just wrote in the group chat, he just wrote, Annie, tell us about the puppets. <laughs> it's a little bit intriguing that you happen to have two puppets that Mr. Rogers personally gave to you. Maybe, maybe people would like to hear about how that happened. Oh, well, I was, uh, my family was friends with the, did you all see the um, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? And there, the man who was the protector of Mr. Rogers, his name is Bill, um, was played in the movie by an actor, but he is a very close family friend, Bill Eisler. Was and the guy who was driving him around in the... Yes. Yes. In the, in the Tom Hanks movie. Yes. And um, anyway, the Eisler family always had several parties a year and Fred was always there and so were we. So I guess the only other important thing about that is we became friends with Bill through uh, his son, Jamie, who my son, Jonah, met in second grade. And they're still good friends with a group of guys from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all lived in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, literally, <laughs> in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Is that enough, Kyla? I don't know, Brandon, what do you think? Just a that, that satisfies my curiosity. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for loving Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I'll let you play with these next time you're over. Okay, sounds good.